Falling for You Like Snow on Christmas Night. Written by N.G. Ivy. Read by Burning Aurora. Remus, Euphemia Potter exclaims the moment she opens the door, and immediately she grabs Remus's arm and drags him inside. It's the first time Remus is attending the Potter's annual pre-Christmas party here in Godric's Hollow. Every year, the week before Christmas, Euphemia Potter will throw this grand party, and it signals the start of a week filled with holiday festivities leading up to Christmas. That's at least what Remus has been told, as he only recently moved to Godric's Hollow. He came here because he wants to be a writer, and the small, picturesque town seemed like the perfect place to write his books. Of course, he has to pay rent, so he works part-time in a newly opened local coffee shop. He gets along splendidly with the owner, Lily Potter, and especially with her husband, James Potter, who teaches sports at the local high school. James and he have become good friends, and that's how Remus met Euphemia. Euphemia was immediately keen on Remus. The moment she heard Remus moved here without knowing anyone, she was determined to do everything to make Remus feel welcome, showing him around town, inviting him over for tea, having him join family brunches and family dinners, all of it. Remus doesn't mind, quite the opposite. He loves Euphemia. She's warm and welcoming and a vibrant part of the community. She knows everyone in Godric's Hollow, and everyone in Godric's Hollow knows her. Come on, Euphemia says, dragging Remus through the party, past all the party guests, I have to introduce you to my son. Remus chuckles, wondering how many eggnogs Euphemia already drank. I already know James. Not James, Euphemia replies. My other son. He's just finished med school and has been working abroad, but now he's back, and just in time for the Christmas celebration at that. They reach the stairs, and Remus notices James coming down, talking animatedly with a man about their age. Remus inhales sharply at seeing that young man. Now... Sirius is definitely a good-looking bloke, but he is handsome like you don't normally see in real life, like the model kind of handsome. He's tall and lean, with dark long hair, falling over his eyes. With an easy grace, his features are delicate, but at the same time sharp. His eyes are especially striking, bright and captivating, the exact same light gray as the cable-knit sweater he's wearing. This is Sirius, Euphemia says proudly, my second son. Sirius looks down at hearing his mother's voice, and those eyes lock with Remus's. Remus gives him a small smile, and Sirius's mouth slightly opens. He misses a step on the stairs and tumbles down the rest of the way. He's adopted, James says, while pulling Sirius up from the floor. Sirius gives him a stomp. Are you okay? Remus asks worriedly. I'd be a lot better if you could just pretend that didn't happen, Sirius replies. Remus raises his eyebrows. What didn't happen? Sirius grins. I like you already. Well, everything about Sirius is just so perfect. His grin is anything but. It's too large, showing too many teeth, and it's slightly crooked. It's Remus's favorite thing about him. Euphemia's not good at being subtle. No, scrap that. She could be great at being subtle for all Remus knows. The case is that she's absolutely not trying to be subtle. Remus, why don't you sit here next to Sirius? Remus, I just asked Sirius to prepare some extra snacks. Could you maybe give him a hand? Sirius, why don't you take Remus outside to show him how nice the Christmas lights on the house look? Remus, you look a little cold. Sirius, don't you have a sweater he can borrow? Remus is standing next to the potter's impressive Christmas tree, sipping mulled wine, when James appears next to him. So, James begins, Mom has evidently decided that you're Sirius's future husband. And oh my, she's not holding back. Not really, no, Remus agrees. I would tell her to cut it out had I thought that either of you was actually bothered by it. James looks at Remus with a sly smile. But I'm getting the sense that neither of you particularly minds. Remus turns his head to look at Sirius standing a bit further in the room. Just at that moment, Sirius also turns his head to look at Remus. As their eyes meet, Sirius gives Remus a soft smile, which Remus returns. As Remus turns back to James, he can't get the smile off his face. No, he says, taking another sip from his mulled wine. I don't mind. Remus, your favorite animal is a dog, right? So is Sirius's. Why don't you two talk about that? It's a bit awkward at first. So, dogs are pretty great, huh? Yeah, yeah they are. But after that, they actually have a lovely conversation. It's so easy and natural to talk to Sirius. Time flies by. Euphemia scrapes her throat. 
Sirius and Remus look up from their conversation about their favorite Christmas foods. Why ruin perfectly good hot chocolate by making it taste like peppermint? I know, right? The only thing that should ever taste like mint is toothpaste. And well, mints, I suppose. Candy canes? Disgusting. Thank you. James is going home with Lily. They're having brunch with her parents tomorrow morning, and Fleamont and I are about to turn in. Remus looks around the room and notices for the first time that, save Sirius, the Potters, and he, the room is empty. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize the time. I should get going. Nonsense, Euphemia insists. We've still got a bottle of champagne left. It would be such a waste if no one drinks it. Why don't you two sit down at the fireplace, drink some champagne, and continue your lovely conversation? Remus wants to argue that champagne doesn't expire that quickly, but Sirius takes the bottle from his mother, and if he thinks it's a good idea, who is Remus to argue? Sirius effortlessly opens the champagne bottle and with a flourish pours two glasses, all in one fluid motion. Smooth, Remus chuckles. Almost makes up for you falling down the stairs when I first saw you. Sirius grimaces as he sits down next to Remus. I'll have you know, I don't usually fall so easily. He hands Remus his glass, and their hands touch. Sirius purposely lets his hand rest on Remus's, and looks at him intently, before speaking in a soft voice. Or so hard, so fast. Remus does kiss Sirius that night. He's sitting in a beautifully decorated room, in front of a blazing fireplace, drinking champagne with a gorgeous man, who's looking at him like he's something special. And well, Remus is only human after all. Sirius's lips are soft, and he tastes like a mixture of champagne and the Christmas cookies he's been eating, and Remus is dizzy with it. He doesn't take it any further, though, and not only because they're sitting on Sirius's parents' couch. He doesn't tell Sirius that he's getting feelings for him as well, because he's simply not sure. Maybe emotionally is. He can't stop thinking about Sirius, and every mention of his name sends a flutter through his stomach. Yes, emotionally, he's all in. But Remus has always had trouble listening to his emotions. He rather thinks things through rationally, and rationally, he's only just met Sirius. What if they're just letting themselves get carried away because of the whole setting? The warmth of the fireplace, the buzz of the champagne, the Christmas lights reflecting in Sirius's eyes? Will the feeling also be there when it's a dreary Monday morning in January? Remus has nothing against a simple holiday flirtation but he won't tell someone he's falling for them, if that's all it is. He does, however, want to get to know Sirius better, and luckily, he's got plenty of opportunity for the following week. At first, it's because Euphemia invites them both over for gingerbread making. Sirius and Remus's batch turn out in Edbel, probably because they kept getting distracted throwing glances at each other. Lily and James invite them both over for coffee and then brunch, and they all go to the Christmas tree lighting together. Do you know your face lights up like an actual Christmas tree the moment you see him? Lily grins at him while they're standing behind the counter of her coffee shop together, after Sirius just came in for a holiday special cappuccino. I did not know that, Remus replies, trying to sound unaffected. Thank you for the information. Lily shrugs, still grinning. Do with that information what you want. If you hurt my brother, I will make you regret it. James crosses his arms over his chest as he gives Remus his strictest look. They're sitting at the dinner table after Lily has dragged Sirius into the kitchen to help with the food. Remus raises an eyebrow. You're giving me the shovel talk now? It's just that I've never seen him look at anyone the way he looks at you. You better make sure you have the right intentions, Lupin. Remus sighs. I'm trying, James. I'm trying. After a while, Remus and Sirius don't need invites from others anymore to see each other. Remus hears that Sirius hasn't had a hot chocolate yet this holiday season, and he suggests to go hot chocolate drinking together. That's when Sirius hears Remus doesn't know how to ice skate, so he takes him to the ice rink to teach him, where Remus clutches onto Sirius's arm for dear life the entire time, and Sirius doesn't seem to mind at all. Sirius also doesn't seem to mind that Remus is holding back a little and doesn't express his feelings. He doesn't lose interest in Remus or tries to downplay his words about falling for him. Remus has known men who, when Remus didn't instantly return their feelings, immediately backtracked and said they didn't mean it anyways. They were just trying to have a laugh or trying to make Remus feel better or doing him a favor. But Sirius stands by his words, and Remus likes that. He also likes their easy conversations. 
He likes Sirius's passion for medicine. How clever he is. He likes that his own dry wit matches Sirius's cheeky comments perfectly. He likes that awful grin that turns him from ethereal to human. He soon finds that he just really, really likes Sirius. The day before Christmas, a fresh pack of snow has fallen. Lily, James, Remus, and Sirius all go out sleigh riding, which Remus hopes will be easier than ice skating. As they walk towards the park together, James and Lily ahead and Sirius and Remus following, Remus steps on a patch of ice hidden beneath the snow and slips. Sirius grabs his arm and thankfully manages to slow Remus's fall, but it's just too slippery to keep him upright and Remus slides down on his back. Sirius moves his hand from Remus's arm to wrap around his shoulders and help him sit upright. Are you okay? Remus, Lily calls out, hurrying back to them. Oh my god, what happened? Did you fall? Remus looks up in Sirius's bright gray eyes, looking down at him wide with concern. Yeah, he says a little breathlessly. Yeah, I did.